Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and to a new what I eat in a day. Today's video is kindly sponsored by LifeSim and I will be talking to you more about them shortly. For breakfast this day, I made a creamy porridge with cinnamon sugar bananas on top. For this, I first poured one and a half cups of boiling water into a pan on a medium heat. I then added in a good pinch of salt and then gradually added in half a cup of porridge oats a quarter at a time and just stirring in between. This just helps stop the oats from clumping together and also gives you the creamiest porridge. Once all the oats were in, I covered with the lid and left that on a low heat for around 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, they should be nice and creamy. I then added in half a cup of oat milk and just stirred that through. Then put in a pinch of cinnamon, and gave it a final stir. I like to serve it up with a little more oat milk just poured over the top for even more creaminess. I then took some smooth almond butter, added that on top and stirred it through the oats a little. Then I sliced up a banana, so I added that on top as well. Sprinkled over some coconut sugar with another pinch of cinnamon and I also drizzled on a little maple syrup. This is very much a go-to breakfast for me, a creamy bowl of porridge with some fruit on top. The cinnamon sugar on the banana is so good. It all comes together and creates an amazing caramel-like flavor. There's not much sweetness going on in the actual porridge itself, so this topping balances everything really nicely. Back to today's sponsor and LifeSim is a nutrition focused app which helps you keep track of your health habits. LifeSim is free to download but I'm using the premium version here which provides additional features. One of the many things you can do with LifeSim is keep a food diary of what you've eaten and that includes macro tracking if that's something you like to do. I personally like being able to track how much water I drink in a day as I often don't drink enough, so that's one of my favorite features. And I also use the exercise diary just to keep a note of what I've done. For example, that was a quick 30 minute walk this day. My goal is to be exercising more and tracking this for me helps as part of maintaining a healthy and balanced lifestyle. There are also vegan meal plans on LifeSim to get you started if you're maybe doing Veganuary, as well as vegan meal ideas. And this giant bowl of creamy oatmeal definitely inspired my breakfast this day. You can download the LifeSim app with the link in the description box below where you can get 50% off throughout January for a 12 month subscription to LifeSim Premium. On to lunch later on and I made a tofu spinach omelette. For this I took a block of silken tofu which I had just drained off and I placed that out on a tea towel. I then cut it in half and I only used one half to make one omelette. I then just used the tea towel to really gently pat the tofu to soak up any of the excess water. And once it was as dry as possible, I then took my Milo blender. I added that half a block of tofu to the blender cup, followed by two tablespoons of chickpea flour, then two tablespoons of nutritional yeast, a teaspoon of English mustard, a quarter of a teaspoon of onion granules, a quarter of a teaspoon of paprika, a small pinch of sea salt, and then a good pinch of Kalanamak, followed by a really good crack of black pepper. I also just poured in around a tablespoon of oat milk just to help it all come together. And then I blended that up on high until it was all well combined and the consistency should resemble like a pancake batter. I then just set that to the side for a minute. I took a large handful of fresh spinach and roughly chopped that up. Next, I melted some vegan butter in a pancake pan on a medium heat. Then I took the spinach and added it in and just allowed it to wilt and cook down. I then added another piece of vegan butter for the omelette. And once that had melted down into the spinach, I added in the omelette batter. And using a spatula, I just carefully spread that out into a circular shape, 
over the spinach, making sure it covered all of the spinach and also making sure that there were no gaps or cracks in the batter. I then just placed a lid over that and allowed it to cook for around four minutes. I then removed the lid and the edges of the omelette should lift really easily and the omelette should easily shuffle in the pan so that the bottom of it doesn't stick. I then just flipped it over to fry it on the other side for a couple of minutes and while it was cooking I put together the filling for it. For this I took an avocado, just roughly sliced it up in its shell and scooped it out into a bowl. To that I then added a handful of chopped fresh coriander, a small handful of chopped spring onions, I squeezed in the juice of half a lime, added in a good pinch of sea salt and then a small pinch of dried chili flakes and I just mixed all of that together until it was well combined. Next I took some vegan feta, this one is by Vilife, it's one of my favourite vegan cheeses. I just crumbled some of that into the avocado mix and then carefully turned that through as well. By this time the omelette was done so I served that up with the avocado filling on one half. I only ended up using half of the filling in the end. And then I just flipped the omelette over the top of the filling. I had that with some mixed leaf salad on the side with some chopped baby plum tomatoes and I also had a slice of this amazing olive bread which I just buttered with some more vegan butter. I've been really hungry for a vegan omelette lately, it's just something I've been craving and this just hits the spot. I've made plenty of vegan omelettes before using just chickpea flour which does work really well but chickpea flour on its own has quite a strong flavour and I've been experimenting making a silken tofu omelette using the same ingredients I use to make scrambled tofu. The chickpea flour in this really helps hold it together though and it's just so easy to throw together in the blender and cook it up. The omelette itself is way better than any egg omelette I remember eating before I went vegan. The English mustard just gives it a nice kick. The texture is fluffy in the middle, but it's crispy and golden on the outside. The flavor of the spinach cooked into it is delicious and this avocado filling works perfectly with it. In the afternoon, I grabbed a snack from Pree's Puddings. They do some really good pop squares and pies, and I had the cashew butter pocket-sized pies with a cup of tea. With Lifesum also, you can use the barcode scanner to automatically add snacks, and it will input all of the information from that product, such as the nutritional info into your food diary, and it's just so quick and easy to use. For my tea, I had the Bird and Blend Banana Bread chai they're my favorite for tea as you'll well know by now and this tea is so flavorful and warming the best for a cold winter day it's the perfect combo of banana cinnamon vanilla and cardamom and i usually get their loose leaf teas and use them with an infuser but their tea bags are fully home compostable too. Whilst that was brewing and in between having a snack, I tend to use this time just to tidy the kitchen from lunch so it doesn't all pile up by the end of the day. There are three flavors of these pies, the cashew butter, then a pecan and chocolate version. They're all so good. And these cashew pies in particular are made using only four ingredients, coconut oil, gluten-free oats, cashew butter and dates. They're very indulgent, but so, so good. Really creamy and the crust is like an oaty biscuit. Went really nicely with my cup of banana bread chai, which I added a splash of oat milk to after it was done brewing, just for extra creaminess. Then for dinner later on, I made a yellow curry with udon noodles, fried mushrooms and aubergine. I nearly always make my curry paste from scratch and I find that they're best made using a pestle and mortar. I took two shallots, roughly chopped those up, then I crushed and finely minced four cloves of garlic. I took a stick of lemongrass which I trimmed, 
I removed the outer layer and then I just bashed it using the end of the knife to release the flavours. Then I finally minced that up. I took a six centimetre chunk of peeled fresh ginger and again just minced that up and then I sliced up three small red chilies. I just set those aside while I minced up a teaspoon of cumin seeds using the pestle and mortar. I ground those up until they were nice and fine. Next, I added in the shallots and really ground those down into a paste, which takes a lot of work, but you get there in the end. I then added in the garlic, the lemongrass, the ginger and the red chilies and continue just to grind it all down until it came together as a rustic kind of paste. I then added in a teaspoon of ground coriander, then the zest of half a lime, the juice of half a lime, a teaspoon of soy sauce, a good pinch of sea salt, a crack of black pepper, and then a handful of fresh coriander, which I'd roughly chopped up. Again, I just ground that all together. It really does take forever and then some, but nothing beats a homemade curry made from scratch. Over in a wok, I heated a few tablespoons of rapeseed oil. Then I added in the yellow curry paste. I actually added the yellow into this curry with a teaspoon of turmeric. I add it in at this point, otherwise it just stains everything, particularly the pestle and water. I fried off the turmeric and the curry paste in the wok for around 10 minutes until it smelled beautiful and fragrant before then adding in two lime leaves and I stirred those in, then added in a can of full fat coconut milk and just gradually stirred that through until it all came together. I next poured in around 400 ml of vegetable stock. Again, gave it another good stir through and then brought that to a gentle simmer. And while that was simmering away, I took an aubergine, just trimmed the ends and then sliced it in half lengthways then sliced it up into kind of half moons. I drizzled some more oil into a griddle pan and then using a pastry brush, I just coated the pan evenly in the oil. I then placed in the aubergine slices and sprinkled over a good pinch of sea salt and allowed those to fry on one side before turning them over to fry on the other side. I next added a tablespoon of coconut sugar to the yellow curry. This just helps give it a nice sweetness as the turmeric can make it slightly bitter. I also tasted it and decided it needed a little more salt. Once the aubergine was looking nice and grilled, I then took 100 grams of oyster mushrooms. These were actually jarred oyster mushrooms as I haven't been able to find fresh ones for ages, but these fried up really well. I just drained and pressed them with a tea towel first. I then added two portions of pre-cooked udon noodles to the yellow curry and just kept turning them through until they broke apart and became separated in the sauce. And once well mixed through, I then added 100 grams of sugar snap peas and stirred them in. I also then squeezed in the juice of the other half of the lime left over from making the curry paste and gave it a final stir before serving it up. This is enough to make two portions and even then there was a little bit extra but we still managed to finish that off. There seems like a lot of liquid when adding the veg stock but it thickens when the noodles go in and there's a good amount of sauce which I just spoon over the noodles in the bowls. I then took the fried aubergine and oyster mushrooms and just added those on top of the noodles, sprinkled over some black sesame seeds added on some more sliced red chili and of course finished with some fresh coriander on the top. This is such a delicious warming and flavorful meal. I love a yellow curry and it's so good with udon noodles. Gets kind of messy though, especially with the turmeric, just as a pre-warning if you try this recipe. Anything with like a coconut milk broth and those amazing flavors of garlic, Lemongrass, ginger, chili, and lime is just a combination of fragrant goodness to me. The sugar snap peas are only lightly cooked at the end, so they give a bit of a crunch. And then the fried aubergine and mushroom on the top add even more texture and work really nicely with everything else. Overall, a really hearty hug in a bowl kind of meal.
Then for dessert, we had these coconut collaborative peanut butter chocolate cups. Apparently this was a day of all the nut butters. I love their desserts, the regular chocolate pots, the salted caramel and the banoffee flavours, but I have to say these tasted nothing like peanut butter. I don't know if they just forgot to put the peanut butter in this batch, but they were still a really nice and smooth rich chocolatey dessert and tasted so good and that's it for another day on my plate thank you again to lifesim for sponsoring today's video don't forget to click the link in the description box below to download the app and get 50 percent off throughout january for a subscription to lifesim premium thank you so much for thank you so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed and i'll see you again soon bye